Who's got really healthy pumpkins, a big aphid problem, and no mustache? Watch the rest of the video to find out. Man, the last couple weeks, these guys really blew up. I had to expand this fence twice to be able to fit them all in here and to be able to protect them. The corn's coming up and the two beans that lived are doing pretty well in the back. Hey, but as healthy as they are, check it out. I got, I got aphids. I got aphids down here. I got aphids under here. I got aphids down here. And it's not only the aphids, there are tons of ants. So these ants in here that are kind of hard to see at the moment, they're kind of relaxing. They really come out when I water. These ants actually love subsisting on something that the aphids leave, that the uh, larvae leaves. There's some kind of interaction there. Basically, aphids bad for plants. Aphids good for ants. I like my plants, but not the ants. So we're gonna do something about that. So the first thing people always think about is ladybugs. And after several minutes of uh, research on the internet and through YouTube, I came to find that ladybugs, they're fully matured and they're done eating. Oftentimes you see them fly away. So lacewings, on the other hand, the reproduction cycle, I think is a little bit quicker and for whatever reason they tend to stay around a little bit more than ladybugs so maybe not as pretty but we'll see this package was $19 off of Amazon link in the description Now I have 2,500 of these eggs. Uh, full disclosure, I didn't know how many I needed. I bought the number that seemed about right. They came between a couple hundred and several thousand, so 2,500 felt like the kind of good mid-ground. They come in either this rice hull or on cards that you actually hang in the affected areas. What it says to do, place them into these kind of french fry bags that were provided. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. So 20% is gonna go in each one, and I'm gonna hang them in here around the affected areas. Within about five days, we should see some larvae eating my aphids. All right, so there it is. The cards are hung by the aphids with care, with hopes that lacewing larvae soon will be there. You can see here this damage that was caused here by the aphids coming in, and the fact that they're here chomping on the male flowers as well is uh, big sad because the male flowers need to pollinate the female flowers that eventually turn into pumpkins. We've actually got a couple. That's the largest one. This one here, this guy here is about three inches.
and the others will come before long. This guy's probably an inch right now. They're coming along as well. See here on the corn, it's these ants that I'm trying to get rid of. So hopefully these lace wings can eat some of the aphids and that will encourage the ants to go elsewhere in search of food. The corn, I don't know if it's some kind of determinant variety, but this guy is about four feet tall. Here we're about five feet tall. And then this one, is the tallest at about six feet in total height. Two of them here are starting to actually grow what's going to turn into our sea glass corn. And this third one, for whatever reason, this third section here, doesn't quite have anybody yet. It's interesting that it's the tallest, but it's not the first one to actually go to flower. Here is one, two, three, four. I don't know why this one's so small. It has something to do with when I broke ground, there are only certain, so many nutrients. This pumpkin was eaten by rabbits fairly early on. And going through this process in the last two months, we had our battles back and forth with the rodents, eventually thwarted by this uh, hastily, hastily constructed fence. Uh, it has done the job. Corn, we have four stalks remaining here, five here, five here. These are the only beans that have survived. There's one there, and then one here on the other side. It's interesting, the point of this is that the pumpkins grow the broad leaves and shade the corn and kind of protect the ground. I don't think I necessarily spaced them too far out. As you can see, the kind of crowding between these and the fact that I had to push the fence back these two guys would have taken up more space and would have shaded a little bit better. I'm really disappointed in how the beans turned out. It may have been just a weak variety or a weak seed that I ended up purchasing. So there might be time to plant some more. I think we're just going to let it ride and go with the two here. The point of the beans is to climb up on these stalks. Now I have a couple more minutes of light here. I think I'm going to do some pruning. What I want to do is take a look at these guys that have already flowered and been pollinated and count back. Let's see, there's one, two, three. So we have three pumpkin that are going to be coming off of this vine. So in an effort to help the plant focus on those and really maturing them for Halloween, I'm going to prune back the rest of this vine. Taking a look here, we're going to prune right on the other side of this guy, probably there. And I'm also going to get rid of this immature fruit there. Pick out the immature pumpkins that are coming off of the same vine is going to be the next order of business here. And I'm going to trim them off so that again the plant's putting energy into those three on this vine. Got one little guy there, a couple other little ones there, a couple guys there. This one was adorable. It looks like a little gnome. Look at him. He's so cute. Bye. I only see two on this vine, so I'm going to leave them. Two on that vine, so I'm going to leave it. That'll leave us four on this center plant. And on the guy on the end, I see a couple, but I can't tell who's actually decided to start going. So I'm going to wait and let the plant tell me which ones it wants to try to put effort into because I'm not a pumpkin expert. And since I'm pruning, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. Look how tall this tomato wants to be. I'm going to keep it at about the height of this stake, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this top section. Like that. It's actually another part over here. Take a look at this. This is ridiculous. Look how big this is. Big long one on the side as well really would have been a good candidate for some kind of cage or another method. We'll see if he ends up not lasting and I end up replacing him, then we'll probably do that. This one too. And this one too. I thought this was part of the third one. This guy is massive. Strong like ox. Strong like tomato plant. guy is just so big. Let's go ahead and cut out some of these ripe ones. Take them inside, see if we can eat them. Four 
good size tomato there. This one by himself. He's kind of split open. Let me know in the comments if that's okay. Can I eat that? Should I eat that? Two more, and then this one is a little odd looking. It's brown on the bottom. I didn't personally find the answer to that. I've been told that it has something to do with the amount of nutrients that it's getting, and I've since remedied that for the most part. The first month or two that I had this guy, he was putting off a lot of fruit that looked like this with a kind of brown bottom to it. See a circle of life, here we go, back on the compost. Probably don't need to cut these up. I feel like it kind of helps out though, only because it kind of helps it in the process decompose here. We'll see, I might not put all of this in here. You want to keep a good ratio of brown to green, and I'm pretty sure because this is fresh, fresh clipping, I think it counts as green. I'm not entirely sure. Again, cutting it up a little bit, like I mentioned in the tumbler video for this composter. Link in the description is going to help keep it from getting stuck and not really turning when I go through 